Hello, everyone. My guest today is Ben Lowley. He's the co-founder and CEO of Find CRA, a search platform that gives bankers powerful data and tools to find qualified nonprofits for compliance with the Community Reinvestment Act. Ben, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. All right. So first off, I, I bet most of my audience does not know about this Community Reinvestment Act. Would your software kind of exist without that act or are they directly correlated? They are directly correlated, but the, uh, the act would definitely exist without us. Okay. So walk me through um, how you help people use or leverage or comply with the act. So our platform is designed for bankers uh, to meet their compliance obligations under the act. The act was started about 40 years ago. It requires banks to... Uh, meet the credit and uh, financial service needs of all areas of their communities, including the uh, low to moderate income parts of their community. And they often need to partner with certain types of organizations frequently that's nonprofits. Um, so our platform helps them find eligible nonprofits to work with. Okay. What, what, um, I'm going to ask more questions there to actually understand how that works. So I am in Chicago. I'm a bank. Um, uh, you're saying maybe for people that apply for, I'm making this up a mortgage yeah. for the bank that don't meet our check boxes, but I still have to give them a mortgage. Somehow I work through nonprofits to make that happen. Um, in, in, in certain scenarios that could be the case. Um, if, if you don't qualify, if your income's too low, uh, you may be able to work through and get qualified for a special, uh, flexible rate mortgage product that the bank has partnered with that nonprofit on. What is that uh, compliance act though directly targeting in terms of the bank products? Is it mortgages? Is it credit cards? What, what specifically? Uh, it would include mortgages, um, any uh, bank products, loan products, or deposit accounts that are designed to assist low income individuals or low income geographies. The, the act is also designed to give credit to banks that provide donations and investments to organizations in the community that are helping uh, low to moderate income geographies or people. What does a credit mean? Is that a code word for a tax break? Uh, it's credit during their exams. So uh, banks are audited every two to three years under the, under the act, under the regulations. Uh, to make sure that they're meeting uh, a minimum level of, of needs in their communities. So um, when the auditors come in, that, which is the federal regulatory agencies, it's the FDIC, the OCC, or the Fed, um, they'll look to see what the bank has done during that two to three year time frame to meet the needs of their communities. Okay. Uh, they'll get a report of all their activities and they'll get credit from the examiners uh, for qualified activities. Sometimes the things that the bank does don't qualify. Okay. And this act, how, how is it measured? In other words, if I'm a bank with a um, uh, uh, billion dollars in assets under management in Chicago, is, does it say that I have to have put at least 2% of my assets under management towards these nine, you know, these CRA aligned nonprofits? That's a great question. Uh, the act does not uh, stipulate an exact percentage but banks will often look at about to do about uh, one to two percent of their tier one capital in uh, community investments to meet their CRA requirements. Okay, this is making more sense now. So again, bank, I'm a bank. I'm in Chicago. A billion assets under management. My tier one is maybe eight hundred million. I want to take one percent of that, so call it eight million uh, over the next yeah. twelve months, and put it into something that is CRA aligned in nonprofit. I search Chicago on findcra.com. It shows me there's 541 community services to LMI individuals, 135 opportunities for affordable housing. Let's say I like affordable housing. So basically your software will help me find and identify those 135 projects I could put that $8 million toward. Bingo, you got it. Awesome, Faster. okay. Very impressed. Now that, I, now that I understand the products, tell me how you make money. So we make money by selling access to our rich data that we have gone through and curated. It's gone through our algorithm, our proprietary algorithm that we've built. We take public data, we aggregate it, we, and 
we do a manual curation to come up with a list of all the qualified nonprofits in all the geographies throughout the United States. And then we sell for that data somewhere. To, it's all publicly accessible. It's all publicly available data uh, sources like the IRS. Um, so you're scraping like kind of unstructured web data, right? It's, it's actually, it's not unstructured and, and there's no scraping. These are, um, file downloads, CSV downloadable files that any, uh, any person could go out and download to their computer. Okay. So you know, my obvious next question, right? Is okay. Why don't the banks just do that directly? You're adding some value in between. Otherwise they wouldn't pay you. Right. Um, so we're doing it at, you know, on a large scale. Um, banks, they're, they're only assessed where they have brick and mortar branches. So uh, it's, it's a lot of work for a CA, CRA officer to go and do this. Um, and a lot of them aren't reviewing every single nonprofit in their assessment areas. So assessment areas where they're, they, they're required to give uh, I see. Uh, services. And, loans. And, and am I going to pay you? So again, I'm a bank. I'm in Chicago. I'm going to put 8 million bucks into the CRA kind of compliant nonprofits. Or, or am I paying you a flat fee for access to a certain number of records, like a SAS model, or is the percentage of the 8 million I put through you? What is it exactly? Yeah, we keep it. We try to keep it very simple for the banks. Um, it's an annual fee for access to the platform. The platform houses all the data. And they can search by city, state, uh, zip code, or county. Uh, often, the assessment area will be a county. So okay. if I have a branch in Cook County, is that Chicago? Is Cook County? So I'm not, I'm, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> um, if I have two branches in, in Chicago, maybe it's in downtown Chicago, um, I'm, my assessment area may be all of Cook County. I see. Okay. So what would I pay? I mean, what's the average bank pay you per year for this kind of tool? Uh, we have three tiers of pricing. Um, if it's a, a, a bank that just has like one branch or two branches, it's uh, 1250 a year. Um, 1250. That's, that's correct. That's correct. And uh, the next tier up it's for banks that are uh, operating in, you know, usually around 10 to 15 markets. And, um, use maybe around uh, a billion in assets. That's uh, $2,500 a year. And then once you get above 3 billion in assets, it's 5,000 a year. Okay. And what would you say your average is closer to 5,000 or 1250 per year? Um, you know, this is a fairly new product, Nathan. And um, it's, it's been interesting. Our, we actually are averaging to have more large banks. Okay. Right now, but We've got um, an, an, a significant number of small and medium-sized banks as well. So um, we currently have 11 banks using uh, or about to use the platform. And um, it it's kind of covers the full range. And we launched this product about a year and a half ago. So um, we are still learning which types of banks have the greatest need. Who, okay. Who's experiencing the most pain in CRA? So, 2017 launched 11 banks today. Minimum price is 1250 for an annual contract. That would put your current AOR kind of in the 13 or 14 thousand dollar range. Is that about accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Look, by the way, uh, thanks for being transparent. I know you're just starting. Everyone starts at zero, though. So, this is the valuable lessons here. Have you bootstrapped to this point, or did you raise capital? We have raised capital. Okay. How much? We've raised about 900000 to date, um, and we started about six years ago. We're coming up on our sixth anniversary. So, you know, this, this is a technical regulation. There's a lot of nuances. Uh, there's a lot of different needs. Um, we, the product wait, that we- Wait, hold on. Sorry, Ben. I don't want to move on past that. For, wait, I, I misunderstood you. You said you launched a year and a half ago, but then you just said you're six years old. Right. So this is a big part of our story is that uh, we pivoted- um, in 2016, we realized the, our initial approach to uh, servicing the needs of bridging kind of the, the gap between nonprofits and banks, um, our initial approach was not going to be scalable. It, um, it was too high touch. We were having too much consultation. So you were like an agency basically, but before that. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
And, and then you uh, shut the agency off and now you're full SaaS. That's right. Full SaaS, much more data driven and um, it's scalable. And we finally have, have found the right uh, fit for, for banks. That's and great. Where they're at. We're, ben, we're running out of time here. So some quicker okay. questions here. Team size sure. today, how many folks? We have uh, three uh, full-time employees and uh, one part-time and two or, and one contractor. That's great. And is everyone based in, uh, in Louisville or spread out? Everyone's based right here in Louisville. Uh, we are bringing on a, uh, an account executive to help with sales and help us really scale up throughout the nation um, in January. That's great. Is it too early to talk about things like churn, CAC, and LTV? It probably is. I, I don't think there, there would be a lot of meaningful, uh, you know, I don't want to distort our true numbers. Um, so maybe this time next year, we could have another conversation. And yeah, look at you, always selling, man. Of course, I'll have you back That's on. Right. Of course, I'll have you back on in a year. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> All right, man. Let's wrap up with our famous five. Number one, what's All your right, favorite business book? Um, I'm going to say, uh, anti-fragile by Nicholas Tillet. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? I've been very fascinated with Jeff Bezos, uh, learning a lot about his, uh, his blue, uh, all of the, the rocket stuff that he's been doing. So I've been yeah. reading up on that. Blue Origin, number three, what is the billing tool that you use? The billing tool? Yep. We use, um... QuickBooks online. Okay, got it. So no Stripe. Do you use anything on top of QuickBooks for analytics? Uh, yeah, we have several different analytics. We, we use Google Analytics. We also use um, uh, Mouseflow. Okay, cool. For session tracking. And I, I've been using for uh, metrics and analyzing metrics, I've been using ChartMogul. Yeah, very Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? I try to get seven, usually it's seven, sometimes it's six. Okay, and what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? Um, single, but I've got a significant other and that marital status could be changing. <laughs> That's exciting. So currently yeah. not married, no kids, right? No kids. And how old are you? I am 34 and I'll be turning 35 this Saturday. That's, oh, congrats, uh, early birthday, happy yeah. early birthday. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Last question here, Ben, what do you wish your 20 year old self knew? I wish that I knew um, that not everyone's opinion matters. Um, just certain people's opinion matter the most and, and really to pay attention to that. Guys, not everyone's opinion matters. Launched in 2017, findcra.com helps local banks understand how to comply with, uh, with an act that essentially requires they give back to the community uh, in a way, again, that it's called the Community Reinvestment Act. Usually it's a certain percentage of their tier one uh, kind of deposit base they look to put back in the community. Again, this company helping uh, quickly identify local communities uh, or local efforts that they can put that money into to comply with that act currently working with about 11 banks. Uh, they're doing about 14, 15 grand right now in ACV. They really just got it going. $900,000 raised team of three folks in Kentucky. Ben, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan.